welcome back to another installment of our Spark of STEM Coffee Break series. If you've been tuning in over the past few weeks, you've learned about some incredible new ways of engaging students and getting your classrooms excited about STEM topics. We've covered a wide range of topics from math and holiday science experiments to engineering design challenges and even forensic science. Hopefully these segments have provided you with some new resources and innovative STEM tips. Now, as you know, this series is brought to you by the USA Science and Engineering Festival and sponsored by AstraZeneca, a global science-led biopharmaceutical business doing incredible work highlighting the importance of STEM education. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm hosting this outdoors, very different from my normal lab setup. Well, as I mentioned, we've had amazing speakers throughout this series, and today is no different. We're outside because today's speaker is going to show you the wonders of Mother Nature. Let me see if I can find him. Hey everyone, you're in luck because today's speaker is none other than me, the Hip Hop MD. Yes, I'm still the same person, just in a lab coat. Now, though I have a background in civil engineering, wildlife ecosystems and natural habitats have always had a special scientific place in my heart, which is why I had an environmental focus with my degree. If you follow my Hip Hop Science platform, You've probably heard about my Backyard Science series. This sponge-like structure right here is a starburst anemone, an organism that stays hidden out of sight. This right here is the Garden Slender Salamander. This crustacean, my friends, is better known as the pill bug. Yes, nature has a profound impact and it's one of the easiest connections to science that students can make. And fortunately, you don't have to trek out deep into the jungle or high up in the Alps to observe it. You can make incredible scientific findings right in your own backyard. So today I'm going to share with you some simple hands-on activities that can help get your students more closely connected with our natural environment. Hopefully you're ready to get dirty. Ah, dirt. One of the most easily overlooked and walked over elements of our environment. Yet dirt holds some rather incredible findings. Using a hand shovel and a few small paper plates, encourage your students to gather up some dirt from various locations in the yard. Observations are one of the fundamental steps of the scientific method. Ask your students, what do they see? How does the soil differ from each location? Can you identify gravel, clay, or sand in your soil samples? What about organic materials such as leaves or maybe even insects? You can even collect some glass jars for your students. Have them fill the jars about halfway with various soil samples. Fill up the rest of the jar with water and shake for about a minute. Trust me, they'll love this. Let the jars sit, preferably overnight, for best results. What do they see? Can they identify different layers of soil within the jar? If they look closely, they should be able to see heavier materials fall to the bottom and lighter material like organic matter float to the top. If your students want to take an even closer look at their soil samples, here's another cool experiment they can try. Cut an oval section from a plastic bottle that has a bit of a concave shape to it. Simply fill it with a bit of water and now they have a simple DIY magnifying glass. Water works to reflect the light coming in from the sun and the curved piece of plastic creates a convex lens. As light bends through the water and then through the plastic, it magnifies objects on the other side. This simple DIY can help teach concepts of reflection and refraction and also creates a fun tool that they can use to make some dirty observations or look closer at other cool things in the backyard. Now we all know humans breathe and animals breathe too, but did you know plants breathe as well? Have your students use a large Ziploc bag and rubber band and then tie up a bundle of leaves growing from a stem on any type of tree in your backyard. Let it sit throughout the entire day, ideally in a sunny location. By the time they check it, they'll notice a large amount of moisture built up inside the bag. This is because plants need to breathe just like us and do this through a process known as transpiration. Small openings in the leaves cause tomata taking carbon dioxide while also releasing water. This water is normally released into the air almost invisibly, but the Ziploc bag enables you to actually see it. A fun survival tip for your students, if they're ever lost in the desert, they can actually use this method to collect fresh drinking water to survive. Talk about an all-natural thirst quencher. Who doesn't love a beautiful bird? 
These modern day dinosaurs exist in pretty much any type of environment and natural habitat, which also includes your backyard. An easy way to observe these animals is to bring them home, right to you. Bird feeders are more than just a feeding tool for your local bird species. They can be a hub for incredible wildlife observations. You can either purchase a simple feeder like this or incorporate additional DIY engineering elements by constructing a feeder at home. With the addition of a little bird seed and finding an ideal location in your yard, you can now attract all sorts of birds. A pair of binoculars can also add to some fun observations, enabling your students to see these animals up close like never before. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might come across some other unexpected wildlife that call your backyard home. Assuming the birds you've attracted have now eaten all your seeds, is there any chance to find some others? Seeds enable plants to reproduce and can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Using your backyard, you can turn your kids into botanists by allowing them to explore and better understand what types of seeds exist and what type of plants produce them. Send your students on a seed scavenger hunt and see just how many different seeds and plant species they can identify. What makes a seed? How do these seeds differ from each other? What seeds are edible and what aren't? These simple observations will give your kids the ability to learn more about the plant life that lives right around them and how those plants repopulate and survive in your backyard habitat. Now that your kids and students have the observation skills they need to know more about their own backyard wildlife, it's time to take that to the next level. Since students all have access to cell phones, how about showing them they can do more than play games or scroll through social media? There's an amazing phone app that can turn them into actual scientists. iNaturalist is a simple phone app that allows you to turn your backyard observations into real life scientific data. Whenever they find a plant or animal species, they can take a picture and upload it to the app. Even if they don't know what species they're observing, simply uploading it will add it to a long list of data where other scientists can identify it for them. This is such a cool tool because your students can not only learn interesting facts about their observations, but also about what other organisms live in their area. They can also compare their findings to others that have been uploaded. iNaturalist observations actually play a critical role as this data gives wildlife experts viable information on the population of various species, how the range of their habitats are changing, as well as what species may be at risk. This is a great citizen science opportunity that you can introduce to your students, empowering them with the ability to make scientific contributions every day, right in the palm of their hands. Obviously, these types of wildlife observations aren't just limited to your backyard. If you have the opportunity to take your students a little deeper out into nature, there are other amazing things that you can discover that can further enhance their connection with the outdoors and introduce them to new environmental concepts. Let's go on a little flashback journey. Streams are freshwater ecosystems, which when compared to our oceans, make up a rather small percentage of the water on Earth. They come from a number of different sources, including lakes, rivers, or runoffs from mountains. As with all ecosystems, streams are made up of two elements, biotic factors and abiotic factors. Biotic factors are all the living things that exist in the ecosystem and include plants, trees, insects, and other wildlife. Invertebrates such as insects and worms play a critical role in stream ecosystems. Along with algae, they can be eaten by frogs and fish, which are in turn eaten by predators such as birds and snakes, which in turn die and provide nutrients for trees and other plant life, all coming together to form the perfect circle of life. Algae is pretty easy to identify in a stream ecosystem. Various types of algae exist, including microscopic algae, known as phytoplankton, and more visible algae buildup, which can be seen on trees, rocks, or the water surface. Algae growth occurs just like other plant life through the process of photosynthesis, converting sunlight into energy. These growths serve as the base foundation of the overall complex food chain. The other factor of stream ecosystems that's not as easily visible but plays just as critical of a role are the abiotic factors. These include non-living things such as the temperature of the environment, the pH of the water, water clarity, minerals and nutrients, and even precipitation levels. Abiotic factors are important because they serve as the glue that helps keep the entire ecosystem together. These abiotic factors help dictate the health of an ecosystem and keep the fragile circle of life in balance. 
One easy abiotic element in a stream that you can test on your own is the pH level. The pH of a stream can tell us the acidity of the water. Using a pH scale, you can dip into the water and analyze your results. The scale that I'm using has nine different water quality tests in addition to the pH. All right, I took three different samples from three different areas of the stream. Based on our water quality reading chart, we show fairly low levels of pH as well as moderate levels in all the other water quality areas, making for a pretty healthy ecosystem. Woo! I hope you all enjoyed that wildlife journey as much as I did. Those simple DIY tips, experiments, and observations were intended to help showcase how you can introduce students to more hands-on concepts, especially as it relates to nature. Hopefully after taking some time to explore their local surroundings, they can have a better understanding about the wildlife and plant life that exists right around them, as well as the importance of nature. And speaking of things that are important, our sponsor AstraZeneca is all about highlighting the importance of STEM topics. Let's take a moment to hear directly from them about why STEM matters. I think STEM education is really important. It helps us to understand how the world works or doesn't work. STEM knowledge goes beyond a career. It's knowledge for life. Building student skills, content knowledge, and fluency in STEM, no matter where they live, is so essential in developing the next generation of creative and innovative leaders. Science, technology, engineering, math, and scientific literacy matter because an understanding of science gives us a common language based on evidence and data. We're using scientific method as a backbone for analyzing new technologies. It's really important to learn these skills so that you can apply them in everyday life. STEM matters because the world depends upon it. We use it in our everyday lives and it's everywhere. STEM and scientific literacy will help us to better understand and meet the challenges posed by emerging diseases, food insecurity, climate change, alternative energy resources, space exploration. The future is STEM. Thank you so much, AstraZeneca, for being an outstanding sponsor for the Spark of STEM Coffee Break series. I hope that all of you watching have walked away with some new resources and tools that can help turn your classroom into a laboratory of STEM excitement and curiosity. If for some crazy reason you've missed any of these episodes, you can binge watch the entire series on demand at usasciencefestival.org. You can also stay up to date with more exciting things happening at USA Science Festival by following them on social media at USA Science Fest. And of course, if you use any of these cool outdoor tips for your classroom or any of the other amazing topics presented in this series, make sure to tag us and use the hashtag Spark of STEM. You can also find out more about me, the Hip Hop MD, and my Hip Hop Science platform by following me at Hip Hop Science Show or visiting my website, hiphopscienceshow.com. It's been such an incredible honor being your host for this series. And by the way things are looking in the ever-changing world of science, we're likely far from done. I hope to see all of you again soon, and I'm even more excited to see what educational skills you develop and how you share them with your students. And as a last little nugget, here's a statement you can share with your students and kids or even utilize for yourself. Curiosity is nature's PhD. Never stop asking. Thanks so much for watching.